Hi, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, today we're going to have a look at a feature in 8050 and higher, um, which is IP address replacement on an interface. So, um, prior to 8050, if you had an IP address assigned to an interface, and that may be a physical interface, it may be a VE, it may be a loopback, it may be the, the out-of-band management address, it doesn't matter. If you had a primary uh, IP address assigned to that interface, you couldn't just change it without removing the primary first uh, and then adding a new one, right? So, for example, I have VE10 here. So VE10 has an address of 1.0.0.254/24. Okay, so let's say the firewall administrator says, "Hey." I'm using that address. I want you to be, you know, 1.0.0.1/24. Okay, fine. So, um, if I just, you know, go to that interface and do a IP address um, 1.0.0.1/24, it's going to refuse and say you can only assign one primary IP per subnet. Okay. What I can do is I could add a secondary address. So I could say you know, dot two, call it a secondary, and now I have both 254 and dot two, right? So I have a, a primary address and a secondary, but that's not what I want to achieve. So in my case, what I want to do is I want to replace 254 with zero. So the way I used to have to do that is to do a no IP address 1.0.0.254 slash 24 then do an IP address uh, 1.0.0.1 slash 24. Okay, so that works and it's fine. However, when I remove that 254, if I'm Telnet or SSH to remotely connected to this device via that subnet, as soon as I remove that 254, I lose connectivity with my box. And then I've got a bigger problem because I have no connectivity to get back in and fix the problem. So, uh, so the, the, the ability to replace that IP is critical because, yes, I'll still lose my SSH session and my Telnet session if I'm Telneted to, dot one, to, to 254. However, the new address is going to take over right away, and I just got to Telnet back into the new address and continue on to where I was. Okay? So let me put that back to where it was, and we'll show you how that works. So we'll do a no IP address, and then we're going to do a... Um, We'll put 254 back in here, just just to get back to where we started from. So if I do a show run, okay. So I'm now back to where I started at the beginning, right? So what I'm going to do again is take this 1.0.0.254 and change that into a 1001 without having to remove it first. So it's pretty easy actually. Just from the interface itself again, just do an IP address. Uh, 1.0.0.1 slash 24 and then just follow it with replace so that just says replace my primary address right so if I look at my running config again there it is it is now 1.0.0.1 without having to replace it and you know as I said the same thing applies to a management right so if we look at my interface management one up here it has 10.0.0.1 on it slash 24 so if we wanted to change that, so interface management one, I could just say, you know, IP address uh, 10.0.0.254 replace. Oh, sorry, forgot the subnet mask. Slash 24 replace, and it is now replaced out, right? So um, what used to be somewhat stressful to change a management IP over a WAN link or or remotely. Um, is now a very simple procedure to do. So uh, that's thanks to the 8050 code. All right, so thanks for joining and have a great day. Take care.